Oh, all right, guys. Am I ready for this? Shh. Guys, first things first. If I said this, the answer, the modulus of minus five is actually five. It means you're allowed no negative values. Okay? If I said the modulus of five, guess what? It's also five. Positive value stays positive, and negative value turns positive. So, there's two ways that this could happen, okay? So, I will take question part three as an example. I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. The first way is like this. What two numbers What two numbers would that make that five? That's five. What's the other one? Minus five. Sorry, whoever says three, you're correct. Just give me a second, okay? So... Does everybody see that? Does everybody see that this number here, which is two x minus one, it either needs to turn into five or it needs to turn into minus five for its modulus to be equal to five. So here's your two answers: two x minus one equals five, two x equals six, x equals three. That's one answer. The other answer is two x minus one equals minus five, and therefore. 2x equals, what's that, minus 4 then? And x equals minus 2. That's one method. Okay? Next method is going to be, the next method is going to be squaring both sides, which is actually handier. So what when you square both sides? What do you get? Square both sides. So you get 2x minus 1 multiplied by, 2x minus 1 equals 5 squared. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. That's 25. Bring it over to your side, it comes. Minus 25 equals 0. 4x squared minus 4x minus 24 equals 0. Divided by 4. And long behold, you get exactly the same. Answer is that okay? We're very happy that when you convert that, you get the same two answers. My advice would be square both sides. Okay? First method is grand and all. It helps you understand it. But whatever you're doing, just square both sides and do it. So, uh, in class now, if possible, I would like you to try the following trick. Try this one, this one, and this one. And my, my, I'll just speed through these for Barry anyway. Hi right, guys, one part four square both sides. And square both sides, you get an x squared to your side, you get nine x squared minus twelve x plus four equals x squared. And you look over to your side, you get eight x squared minus twelve x plus four equals zero. Divide by four, you get two x squared minus three x plus two equals zero. 2x and x. Hmm. Yeah. Minus 2. No. How did I make a mistake? Ah. Right before I get 1, don't I? That makes sense. Yeah, x equals 1, 2x equals 1, x equals 1 over 2. How about that? Can we get 1 and a half for the first one? Yeah. Alright. Next one. Square both sides again. You're going to get 2 by x minus 3 by another 2 by x minus 3. Which is going to be 4 by x minus 3 by x minus 3 equals 4 on the other side. If you square it both sides, this one here. And you're going to get 4 times x squared 
minus 6x plus 9 equals 4. We get 4x squared minus 24x plus 36 take away 4, 0. We're going to get... You're going to get a 4x squared minus 24x plus 32. You're going to divide across by 4. You're going to get x squared minus 6x plus 8. You're going to get x minus 2, x minus 4 equals 0. You're going to get x equals 2 and x equals 4. And we got 2 and 4 for the second one. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but you got it. Come on. <laughs> now, finally, the last one is uh, is probably easy enough as well. You just square out both sides. I think we can move on, can't we? Just square out both sides and get the answer. I think you're well capable of doing that, aren't you? Yeah. All right, let's move on. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, graphs of these look really weird. Modulus function graphs are highly unusual, okay? So, if you take a graph of, uh, let's say, y equals x minus 2 would be a good example, okay? So, when y equals x minus 2, we'll just, think, we'll, just put, we'll just do roughly some values here. In fact, I'll get out the geogebra package. Just give me a sec. Quicker. Okay, so you've all drawn the line y equals x minus 2 before. It's generally a straight line, but the modulus x uh, the modulus is unusual, okay? So here's what happens to the modulus. So if I draw the line y equals x minus 2. Is everybody happy it looks something like that? Crosses the axis at 0 minus 2, and then uh, continues on its path, okay? Now, if I draw this graph instead, and you'll see what I mean now. So this is the graph uh, y equals x minus 2. Now, what I'm going to draw next is I'm actually going to draw this graph here. y equals the modulus of x minus 2. Now here's the issue. On the previous graph, let's take any negative value. See this point here, uh, which is the point uh, minus 2, minus 4. See that point there? Okay. What it is, is when I input an x value of minus 2, the y value becomes minus 4. And that makes the point minus 2, minus 4. You feel with that? What happens on the modulus graph? What happens when I put in a minus 2 for x? Minus 2, minus 2 will give me the modulus of minus 4. But the answer will be 4. So instead of having minus 2, minus 4, you're actually going to have... Minus 2, plus 4. And that happens everywhere. Instead of having a minus 3, what will happen? I will have a plus 3, because it only accepts it only accepts positive values. If I have a value of minus 1, this means I'm actually going to have a value of plus 1. So, can anybody tell me how the modulus graphs actually look? They're actually V-shaped. They go down... And then they bounce back up again. Okay? Now, if you aren't sure about that, you can always go to your calculator. You go menu, uh, obviously with your table function. There should be a button for a modulus somewhere. Or absolute ABS. Can we see ABS anywhere? Where is it? Where? Ah. That's MC apps. Means absolute value, which means positive values only. Okay. Start from I don't know. Start from uh, let's say minus five to plus five. Step of one. Look at the points. What do you know about the y values? Y values are zero, are always positive. So what type of graph does that result in? Results in a V-shaped graph. Does that make sense? All right, so that's the key difference between y equals x minus 2 and y equals the modulus of x minus 2. With that knowledge, what we now know is that these three graphs must be 
homogeneous graphs. Would that make sense? Now, by evaluating f minus 2, h minus 5, and g2, verify that each equation is correct. What equation? Am I missing part of the question? Or is that the full question? Huh? Is that the full question? All right. Now, uh, here's what we're going to do. All I have to do is write an equation for each of the following. All right. It wants me to predict. It wants me to predict what it is. All right. We all think it's a modulus graph, don't we? Because it's V-shaped. Let's start with the red one. Where does it become zero? At x equals minus 3. I would think that might be the modulus of x plus 3. Does that make sense? Or it could be the modulus of 2x plus 6. Or it could be the modulus of minus 2x minus 6. Do all three of them match what we're talking about? Do all three of them match the description of a V-shaped graph that hits minus 3? Let's figure it out. Let's try it out. On all three of them, what happens when you put in x equals 3? What will happen to all three of them? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yep. Sorry, guys. One second. That's why you test stuff. It's actually, uh, oh, sorry, x equals minus 3. Well, I was right. What happens when we test x equals minus 3 and all 3 of them? What happens to the y value? Huh? The y value is 0 in each case. Would you agree with that? So would everybody agree that on the three equations I chose, all three of them work for that point there, don't they? But the next thing to verify is, which one's f? h. I'm currently on h. What is h minus 5? What is the point? Minus 5, 2. This means when I throw in minus 5, the answer better be 2. Only one of the equations matches that. Which equation matches it? Option A, option B, or option C. Which one matches that when you put in minus 5, you end up with a y value of 2? Come on, guys. You better tell me. Hey. Put in minus 5. What happens when you put in minus 5 here? You get minus 5 plus 3, which is minus 2. And what's the modulus of minus 2? 2. That works. A works. Does B work? Find out. 2 times minus 5? Minus 10 plus 6 is? Uh, minus 4, which is? An answer of? 4. So which one matches the description? A matches the description, doesn't it? There's also another hint. What's the slope of each graph? What's the slope of each graph? One across, one up, one across, one up, one across, one up. What do you think? Slope of? Slope of one. If it went, if it went something like this, one across, two up, one across, if it looked like that, what would you reckon it could be then? It could be a 2x. It leaned towards 2x. Because it's 1 across 1 up, 1 across 1 up, it's more than likely just x on its own. Everybody cool with that? All right. What do you think about the blue graph? That's what do we think about the blue graph? f of x there in the middle. What do you think the answer is going to be? Just x on its own, isn't it? Test it out. When x is 0, y is Zero. Is that okay? Try, uh, we have to try f of minus 2. When, f is, when x is minus 2, what's the answer for y? 2. Does that match the description of the question? Yes, it does. Let's move on. What about the green one, Charlie? What do you reckon? Y equals? 
x minus 4 is excellent because when x equals 4, y will equal exactly. What point do we have to test out? G2. So what's the answer for 2 on the green graph? It's the point 2, 2. So when you put in x equals 2, you should get an answer of y equals 2. So it's 2 take away 4, which is minus 2, which equals plus 2. I'm going to pause it there. All right. The slope of the green one is 1 across and 3 up. What would that indicate? A 3x situation. Okay? Now, what do we know about the minimum points? When x equals minus 1, y equals 0. So what can we say there? What happens if we replace x with minus 1? What happens? We get minus 3. What will turn that into 0? A plus 3. So if we put a plus 3 here, it will turn it into 0. And there's your answer. y equals 3x plus 3. Test any other points. Well, there's no need. What? The points. Uh, what about the point 0, 3? What happens when you put in 0? Oh, verify using x equals minus 2. No bother. Uh, what's the answer for x equals minus 2? x equals minus 2. The y value is 3. So what happens when you put in minus 2 here? 3 times minus 2. Minus 6 plus 3 is. And the, that is a y value of 3. All right. That's one of them done, not all of them. All right, you know how to do that, don't just sketch the graph, show where they cross each other, square both sides, and what happens when you square both sides? You'll get a quadratic equation, and you'll figure out what the x value is, and then you can figure out what the y value is. That's an easy question. You won't need to worry about that. All right, what's next on the list? How many questions? Two possible things could happen here, okay? So I'm going to take, uh, I'll take an easy one first. I'll take six part two first. That's the easy one. So for the easy one, here's what you're doing. X plus two, the modulus of X plus two is less than or equal to four. Now, from an input point of view, if this was minus four, would that work? It'd be equal to four, wouldn't it? If this was minus 5, what would that mean? Would it be less than 4? No. Does that make sense? So what I would argue there is that x plus 2 cannot be smaller than minus 4. Why is that? Why can it not be smaller than minus 4? Because any value... If I put in any value into these brackets here, that's smaller than minus 4. Let's say minus 10. Minus 10 is 10, and 10 is not smaller than 4. Does that make sense? All right. So. Oh, give me a sec. My brain's just gone completely again. The easy way is just to square both sides, right? Just square both sides for a minute. I'll explain the other way in a second. That's square both sides, right? And you got to get x plus 2 by x plus 2 less than or equal to 16. x squared plus 4x plus 4 less than or equal to 16. Now, what you can do at the very end is you can test your answers. And you can verify that your answers actually work. So it's quite easy to do. All you do here is uh, x plus 6 and x minus 2 less than equals 0. Uh, would anybody agree with that? No. <laughs> everybody see the two down? No. It's a U-shaped graph, would you agree with that? So it's minus 6 and 2. Are we looking for the in-between or the extremes? 
Have jobs to in between? Yep. Now, what we're arguing here is that we're saying, do you know what? The answer is in between minus 6 and 2. So we're saying minus 6 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. Pick any number that's in that range. What's the laziest number you can pick? Or zero. Zero is just extremely lazy. Go back to the original question and try zero. Now what happens? Is two smaller than four? It works, doesn't it? That makes sense? All right. So in any of these questions in question six, if you just square both sides, everything comes out hunky-dory. When it's not, when it's not a uh, Friday afternoon, I'll explain the separate methods and why it works, okay? Now, likewise, question seven, question uh, seven, part three. Square both sides, everything's cool. So what happens when you square both sides? You're going to get four into x minus one squared, less than or equal to three squared, really quickly. All right, let's take away the other side. And so, everybody happy with that one? You just square both sides, and what you should get is 3x squared minus 14x minus 5, less than or equal to 0. Uh, I'll solve this my way, so that'll be 3x squared minus 15x plus 1x minus 5. And then We'll put it into 3x into x minus 5 plus 1 into x minus 5. 3x plus 1, x minus 5, less than or equal to 0. Okay, we're nearly there. What are the two values you're looking at here? x equals, anybody? Minus a third and x equals 5. All right, U shape graph, why is it U shaper? Plus here, isn't it? Consider it U-shaped. Okay. Then it's minus a third and five. What are we looking for? We're looking for the in-between. Right, so what's our answer? Minus a third, less than or equal to? Less than or equal to? Five. How would you test your answer, lads? Pick any number between minus a third and five. Pick a number. Zero. Go back up to the original question and put in zero. Two times the modulus of minus one is it less than the modulus of three. Is it? Two times one is two. Two is smaller than three. Fits the description of the question. You know you're correct. Alrighty. Uh, far homework this weekend. You guys, shh. All right, lads. You guys are going to do six, seven, one. Actually, yeah, go on. Uh, one, four, five, six, and seven. Questions one, four, five. Six and seven. What page is this on? Four, six, nine. Huh? Four, six, nine.